Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with a brand new edition of the Cabral Concept. This is our Cabral host call, our first weekend chat of the weekend, where I get to answer your questions each and every weekend, typically about a dozen questions per weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Love being able to do these shows. Really feel like it's my best way to stay connected to the community is to really listen to what you have going on and hopefully do my best to help in any way that I can. Fun little tidbit about today's show, episode 2500. No big fireworks, no big to-dos. We just do what we do over here. And again, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy that this is falling on a weekend host call because this is what it's all about. It's about getting people's questions answered. And that's really like, again, this is what I wish I had 25 plus years ago. It really is. It's like, wow, I wish I was able to ask questions and get answers to a lot of these questions. So just keep in mind, Instead of waiting 12 weeks to hear your question read uh, out loud on the podcast, do feel free to ask it at cabralsupportgroup.com to get nearly same day answers from our team and the community. So without further ado, though, let's dive into episode 2500. If you want to read along with the questions, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2500. And if any of this has been helpful before and you've gotten a copy of the Rain Barrel Effect, I would love you to review the Rain Barrel Effect on Amazon. Uh, just my way to be able to reach more and more people around the world. And if you've read the Rain Barrel Effect, you reviewed it. If you'd love to, or if you could, review the podcast, The Cabral Concept, on your favorite media player while listening to this show. That would be fantastic. All right, let's dive into it. Margie's up first. Margie says, Hi, Dr. Cabral. My questions are about vitamin A toxicity. In April, I started using retinol cream at night and then developed dry lips that eventually became cracked, bleeding, and painful in July. I also experienced general dryness in the mouth, eyes, bowels. After listening to your podcast about what your lips tell you about your health, I realized it was the retinol cream and stopped it immediately. My vitamin A history includes three treatments of Accutane. It makes sense that adding retinol to my nighttime routine finally tipped that scale, overflowing the rain barrel, I may say, uh, overloading my liver. I've done two CBO protocols and detoxes since 2018 before I realized that the cream was the source of my problems. Did a seven-day detox, noticed that my lips worsened a bit, especially during the two days of fasting. Stopped the DNS, all supplements that listed vitamin A. Uh, let's see. Because uh, I'm going to have to shorten some of these questions today, but you can always read along at stephencabral.com forward slash 2500, just so that we can make sure we get to all the questions today within our 20 minute time. All right. So basically, uh, what would a low vitamin A diet consist of? Once my lips are completely healed, would it be safe to resume DNS supplements, et cetera? All right. So totally understand. Uh, I've had many clients actually in my practice come and it almost looks like they have a, a raw chapness around their lips, probably much what like you had. So what we do is we put them on a low vitamin A diet. Instead of me going through all of those things, I might have even done it before my podcast, to be honest with you. Um, you can just look up low vitamin A diet on Google and you'll get all of the foods on a low vitamin A diet. Now, I will say this to you, though, that um, in the daily nutritional support and any typical products that we use, we do not use the retinol. So, right, you hear retinol, right? Like the cream you're using at night. We do not use retinol palmate, which is the synthetic version. We use uh, beta carotene, right? That's the same vitamin A in carrots or basically those bright orange vegetables and bright yellow and orange based fruits and vegetables, right? So your sweet potatoes, your carrots, your yams, your red peppers, uh, your orange peppers, et cetera. Okay, but totally understand and, and don't disagree so usually when you're using beta carotene, it does not create the vitamin A toxicity. What creates the vitamin A toxicity is the synthetic vitamin A, like in retinol cream, at high dosages. All right. So I work with many people. It is not an overnight fix. It is typically between like four months and 12 months of really being on a low vitamin A-based uh, diet and doing detoxes 
to get this out of the liver. Uh, coffee enemas, sorry, it took me a second to drag that out of my mind. Saunas, coffee enemas. Basically, I teach you the protocol inside of the rain barrel effect inside the book. So basically, it's um, dry brushing or abhyanga, coffee enema or sauna, sorry, excuse me, sauna, and then coffee enema. Works really, really well. Um, but again, I can't give you any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnose on this podcast that goes for all questions. All right. So hopefully that's a good place to get started. Paul is up next. Hello, and thank you for all you do, Dr. Brawl. My 77-year-old mother has had intermittent amnesia episodes for over 13 years now, occurring on average three to four times per year. She's had extensive testing with no definitive outcome. Tests and scans look at epilepsy, blood supply to the brain, and heart were normal. Uh, there have been no head traumas that she's aware of. Have recently started looking into further myself, come across global transient amnesia, which describes her symptoms almost exactly. When have an episode, she calls them. She loses short-term memory for about a half an hour and has no idea what's going on at that time, nor what's happened in her recent past. She's still able to perform normal functions and is alert and aware. Okay, let's see. Memory gradually returns. Do you recommend any functional medicine testing? She's been taking ginkgo biloba, liquid magnesium on and off for years without any noticeable difference. Okay, so yes, uh, 100% I recommend running the big five labs. And if you can't run them all, please do run the starter kit. And I would look then to use something like the uh, brain support um, and the daily omega-3 support if you're not already doing that, as well as something like the daily nutritional support, daily foundation protocol. Again, once you get to be in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond, you really want to be looking at the daily nutritional uh, sorry, the daily foundation protocol level one or level, sorry, level two or level three and the immunity bundle. Um, again, if you're not used to taking any supplements, start small and then work your way up. But vitamin D, omegas, those are essential. Like even before looking at ginkgo biloba, you got to get your foundations first, right? That's hundred percent what I would look at. And then again, I can't give you the diagnosis, but there, there's many, many times that this is uh, episodic where it's happening at specific times. So is this happening during a high stress moment? Something to look at. Is this happening after a poor night's sleep? Is this happening after um, traveling for a while in a car? Uh, meaning like uh, more carbon dioxide, et cetera. Because this could also be a moment of low oxygen to the brain. And, and again, I'm not saying that this is what it is, but so many people do not uh, properly manage carbon dioxide, and oxygen as they age. So uh, we'll be talking about this again more in January with the high performance program, but it can be done by any age. Uh, you might want to look into something like uh, EWOT, exercise with oxygen therapy, and that should be done with a trained uh, practitioner, but you can certainly look up EWOT in your local area. But again, I would lab test, I would look at what's going on first, and um, you can even use an O2, an oximeter, uh, right on the finger just to see if that blood oxygen is dropping below, you know, let's say a 97, 96. I think that'd be important to look at. All right. Danny's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Grateful for your work and would love to hear your thoughts. A few months ago, I had my first eczema and dermatitis flare-up since 2019 when I healed my gut and rebalanced my body with my naturopath. The dermatitis is on my face, either seborrheic or perioral. I have used native and no, pro, no pong deodorants for years, but they irritated and inflamed the eggs of my armpits. It was very painful, so I didn't apply anything all winter. My first thought was gut-skin connection, so I've been using a gut powder, also ran the big five. I uh, have already received my intolerance test back as I felt it was urgent to me, but everything was fine on it, not one intolerance. I finished the 21-day detox, still some dermatitis in my face, and I just tried some bicarb-free no-pong deodorant. After a few hours later, a rash and itching started. Interesting. Um, so now I'm wondering what other causes should I be looking at for this flare-up? I'm sure I'll get more answers with the big five, hoping it was something as simple as a food intolerance. Okay, so... Let's get into it. Hormonal eczema, got it, understood, and happy to help. So it's very interesting that uh, your body can be certainly tipped more towards TH2 dominance from higher levels of stress recently. Um, it could be a winter-based issue, like with the dryness in the air, uh, lack of moisture barrier, change in pH on the skin. Most likely not, but certainly possible. Um, is there a recent exposure to heavy metals or mold? And then anything new introduced on the skin would cause a flare-up. 
Uh, I don't know exactly what are in these deodorants that you're using. I'm not able to look them up, you know, while on the show. Uh, but there's certainly a, a strong connection. And it looks like, and because I think it says a few hours later, so it's some type of more IgA, IgE reaction. And again, keep in mind the food sensitivity test that you took is an IgG reaction, all right? So that means a delayed response. That doesn't mean that you can't have a different immunoglobulins that have an immediate response like you're finding out right now. So there could be anything that causes the um, hives, itchiness of the skin, headaches, brain fog, et cetera, could certainly be a food that's still an intolerance from an IgA, IgE perspective, okay? Just not IgG, which is what we test for. Um, okay, so because it's easier to figure out which things you're sensitive to if they start bothering you right away. It's hard to f- figure out what they are if they bother you two, three days later. That's why we test for those. So now um, the big five will certainly give you a, a much better look. There's no doubt about it. Um, I would look into... I mean, you have like the eczema-based ones, no matter what, we're doing an elimination diet. So uh, we are eliminating dairy, eggs, and gluten for three to four weeks. So regardless, just give that a shot. You can always reintroduce them afterwards, but we're eliminating those really clean diet. Um, If you've done, I don't know if you've done the CBO protocol, but more like the first 12, uh, sorry, 21 days of that program. And then we're making sure you get enough omega-3s and then you're already using the healthy gut support powder, and then I would just make sure you're on a solid probiotic that is not causing a flare-up, but actually improving. And keep in mind, when working with uh, dermatitis or eczema, we're typically working the process over six to 12 weeks. So I wish I could give you something specific, but again, there's not a specific thing for me to give you except how to work the process to figure that out, and you'll definitely be able to figure it out. All right, Lewis is up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl. I wanted to get your thoughts on the salt water flush. I believe this is also an Ayurvedic practice, but I could be wrong. It involves drinking about a pint of warm to hot water with about two tablespoons of salt, pink or sea salt. After some time, it will purge the contents of the intestines until the water eventually comes out clear. The only downside I know of is it may cause electrolyte imbalances, but replenishing those isn't a problem for me. I've done this many times over the past few years, but wanted your opinion on this procedure as well. Thanks for all you do. Okay, totally understand uh, where you're coming from. Um, And yes, this is an Ayurvedic-based practice. However, they usually use it in terms of um, purgation or um, uh, I believe the term is, uh, I don't want to use the wrong term, begins with a V. It's just not popping in my head as I've got a lot of your answers swirling around right now. Uh, okay, we're going to keep it at that so I don't give you the wrong uh, word. But what often it was used for is that an individual would throw up also the contents of their stomach. It wouldn't always... It, the If you use a larger amount of salt, you're going to throw up the contents of your stomach. If it's a lesser amount of salt, the stomach will then not immediately throw it up, but then it will pass through the intestines. And yes it will then clear out your bowels. Now, just keep in mind that it can very well throw off your electrolyte balance and could cause heart palpitations. Because if you're throwing off your salt to potassium levels and sodium to magnesium levels, it could cause uh, imbalances with the heart. And that's why I never, I don't recommend this. So what we do is something called an intestinal cleanse. And you can find that at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. So anything that I mentioned today, the labs are there, the, all the products are there, et cetera. Again, you don't have to use the ones that I use in my practice, but you can at least see what we use, and then you can choose to do what you feel is best for you. So um, everything you said is correct. Uh, we do an intestinal cleanse instead. And um, there is also something called the liver flush, and I have a free podcast on that. And you can search that at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. It's called the Amazing Liver and Gallbladder Flush. It's an Ayurvedic-based uh, protocol, and uh, it's along the same exact lines. You're actually using um, Epsom salt, and you are, which has magnesium in it, um, and it has uh, olive oil and grapefruit. All right? So, good. Let's answer another question. This is a very long question. So, we'll do our best to give you the basis. It's from Nikki. Nikki says, Hi, Dr. Brawl. 55-year-old female, mainly Vata, with some kapha, exercise six days a week. I'm 5'6", 112 pounds. I've done the 21-day detox, seven-day detox three times this past year. I've done the big five and the neurotransmitter test. 
I have candida and yeast overgrowth along with food sensitivities, probably from leaky gut. I've done the CBO protocol with the citricidal drops, noticing digestive improvement only while on the citricidal. Each time I introduce new foods, I get gas, bloating, loose stools throughout the remainder of the CBO, so I didn't keep with them. Understood. Okay, got it. Healthy belly. Uh, done the para, I've done the para support protocol, intestinal cleanse, heavy metals. My hormones are still not aligned. That's what I was going with, assumed. Um, estrogen, progesterone supplements. Got it. All right, I'm concerned that I still feel the same way and won't be able to introduce foods. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm not dismissing any of your question, but I've seen this now. So I've been doing this, uh, again, like I don't want to, um, I never want to come off condescending. I never want to come off that I know it all, anything like that. I don't. Um, again, like I study every day, meaning like read research and I read books every day for at least an hour. That's my dedication to you and dedication to myself. So I will continue to do this for the rest of my life. But I've, I've now seen well over a quarter of a million client appointments with my team. And I can tell you for sure, and I've mentioned this on many, many podcasts, that the only people who don't fully uh, recover, typically after doing the CBO protocol with the citricidal drops, are those people where stress is the ultimate cause, the ultimate root cause of the digestive difficulty. And so the reason for this, and, and you mentioned it with the hormones, is that when you elevate sympathetic nervous system stress, which is ultimately fight or flight, you're producing more norepinephrine and cortisol. Those are stress-based hormones. So when you're, um, in, when you are, those cascade, when they continue to increase and they flow through the body, you are then not in the parasympathetic nervous system. So you're not in the rest and relax and digest. That means that your body is not going to be bringing the potentially pancreatic enzymes, potentially HC, HCL, hydrochloric acid, and everything to your stomach, even the ability to churn and create peristaltic movement to move these foods through the intestinal tract, right? It's not doing that because the blood is not flowing there. It's ready for fight or flight. So when you tell me that you're mainly Vata, totally understand. You're 5'6", 112. So again, it might be the perfect weight for you, but it's definitely on the lower end, right, of weight. Uh, you're exercising six days a week. You're a go, go, go type of person. You know, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I know people a little bit better than they, than they know themselves, right? Because sometimes it takes an outside uh, voice. So in my, and you wrote, ran the neurotransmitter test, my greatest suggestion is that you don't need to overdo the protocols right now. You need to work with a really qualified, um, and, and, I, and again, I mean no disrespect at all. Like I'm, I'm, just saying like it takes one to know one like I'm someone that gets amped like I understand it so I've had to learn how to turn on the parasympathetic nervous system right so you need to dramatically improve your sleep right uh, hour and a half of deep sleep two plus hours of REM um, calm the central nervous system focus more on walking focus more on binaural beats biofeedback improving HRV uh, like lowering heart rate working with a hypnotherapist potentially, not like, you know, a hypnotizer, but someone that can work on calming the central nervous system, maybe someone that specializes in neurolinguistic programming or cognitive behavior. We need to work on that stress-based system. And then your digestive system will then be able to relax and do its job. So again, I don't want you to, I, I always say like supplements are not the end all be all. They're a huge adjunct to getting well. For you, magnesium, omega-3s, the entire sleep support protocol, most likely at night, is going to be fantastic. But um, we need to also work in the lifestyle. Calm that central nervous system. Not high-intensity interval training right now. We need to actually get that body into more of a safe, calm-based state. All right? And that might take a few other types of coaches as well and therapists to kind of get you there too. Again, like, not, not saying anything's wrong with you. It's just my duty to help you get to your underlying root cause and answer. And I want to be able to help you with that. All right. So thank you, Nikki. We are with long questions today. So we're going to keep it at that for today. They were great questions. So I appreciate that. This was a fun episode 2,500, but again, just another show on the Cabral concept. We're here each and every day trying to help this community uh, live their best life. We'll put it that way. I'll be back tomorrow answering more of our community's questions. Take care, buddy. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. 
You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.